Hello again, everyone. This is Gene Ahrensberg coming to you on Memorial Day. You know it's got to be important for me to break into a holiday to bring you what I think is some pretty important information about the commitments of Traders Report. We're going to be talking about something unusual that's going on with the commitments of Traders, and let's get started. Before we move into the COT, though, let's call attention to the good news that came this week with the outperformance of mining shares over the metals. Remember last week we saw what looked like a capitulation with the Huey and now we've got follow through to go with it. 8% uh, of follow through, 8% to the upside. This table of figures that you see is the legacy COT report for gold futures and this is the part that that the uh, that covers the large commercial traders. We follow the commitments of traders reports because they're they're kind of a window into what the largest traders of futures are doing how they're positioning and the changes that they're making. The COT is just one indicator but it's an important one and right now we think that the COT is sending a bullish signal maybe one of the most bullish signals it's sent in years. Now what we're looking at here is gold rose twenty four dollars and twenty five cents it's about one point six percent to fifteen hundred and sixty eight dollars and change that's Tuesday to Tuesday the COT week the commercial traders, the combined commercial traders in the legacy COT report reduced their collective net short positioning by 3,319 contracts. That's 2.4% less and that's on a rise for gold. That's as the open interest jumped 13,000 and change contracts up to 435,700 and change contracts. So We've got, the, we've got gold going higher, but the commercials are still getting smaller in their net short positions. Now what this data suggests is that the commercials are aggressively covering their short positions on gold. Now here's what the data looks like in graph form. That blue line that you see is the large commercial net short positioning or the LCNS. And what we're looking at is the lowest LCNS since December 23 of 2008. So right now with gold in the 1570s or in the 1560s as of Tuesday, the large commercials are about the same amount of net short as they were during the depths of the Great Panic of 2008. I don't have to tell you that in 2008 there was a legitimate question as to the future of the global banking and financial systems and there was a bona fide rush to liquidity and it was just beginning to ease up for gold in December of 2008. Gold recovered ahead of the uh, stocks remember. In fact the big markets didn't bottom until March 9 of 2009. Now this is important since February 28th of this year as measured on COT Tuesdays gold has retreated by $215 or about 12.3 percent from seventeen hundred and eighty three dollars to fifteen hundred and sixty eight dollars on COT Tuesdays and as it did traders classed by the CFTC as commercial have reduced their combined collective net short positioning by one hundred and nine thousand and change contracts or forty four point seven percent back in February they were net short 24.5 million ounces and now they're down to net short 13.6 million ounces that'll give you an idea of how much difference there is. To put a bow on this one gold has corrected 12.3 percent since February and the uh, commercial hedgers have closed or offset 44.7 percent of their hedges. The big hedgers are not positioning for much lower gold prices so says the legacy COT. Now we compare the LCNS, the large commercial net short position, to the total open interest. We call that the LCNSTO. We think that's a, a way to gauge whether or not the, the hedgers are being aggressive or not. And here's what the graph looks like. Now the idea behind this is simple. The blue line is the LCNSTO and if the hedgers feel like there's a, a big risk of the price of the commodity falling well they're more inclined to hedge so that blue line will be high and if they're not uh, convinced that the commodity that they're trading is about to fall then the blue line will fall and get lower and the lower it gets on the graph means the the less they think that the commodity is going to fall in this case gold and right now they are very close to the bottom limits of the chart the simple way to say it is that the 
big hedgers are not being aggressive in their hedging. That's the same thing as saying that they don't believe gold has a lot of downside left in it. Take a look at the comparison to where we are now versus where we were in the middle of the panic of 2008. As of Tuesday, May 22nd, the LC and STO fell to 31.1% of all COMEX contracts open. That's the lowest since November 18 of 2008. It was 24.6% then with $738 gold. If you take anything away from this, uh, from this talk or this graph, it is that right now with gold in the $1,560 range, the COMEX commercial hedgers are positioned roughly as they were with gold in the $730 range back during the 2008 panic. Now before we leave this graph and move to silver, just notice that the lows for this particular graph often correspond with lows in the price of gold. Our view with the LC and STO this low is to err on the side of the of the bulls, not the bears. Now let's jump, jump to the legacy COT for silver. We're still in the large commercial section. Now the COT report for gold was getting to the point where it's strongly bullish from a contrarian point of view and the big hedgers seem to be aggressively getting smaller in the net short department but they're doing even more of that with silver futures. Looking at that last line of data as silver rose 47 cents or 1.6 percent to twenty-eight dollars and sixteen cents Tuesday to Tuesday combined commercial traders in the legacy COT reduced their, their collective net short positioning by 686 contracts to show a very low 15,222 contracts net short. So we have silver slightly higher but the commercials still getting smaller in their net short positioning. Look at that. The silver LCNS is very near the decade lows set December 27th of last year. That was 14,132 contracts net short then with $28.67 silver. Since February 28th, as measured on COT Tuesdays, silver has corrected $8.73 or 23.7% from $36.89 to $28.16. As it did, the big hedgers have reduced their combined collective commercial net short positioning by a huge 29,371 contracts. The commercials have gone from being short or net short 223 million ounces down to 76 million ounces just since February 28. Just to give you a sense of what that means, as measured by the legacy COT report, the lowest amount of silver metal net hedged by the commercials in the last 11 years was 70.6 million ounces on December 27, 2011. That's only about 6 million ounces less than Tuesday's COT the commercial hedgers are not very large on the net short side. In fact, the LCNS is near decade lows, so the combined commercial traders are not positioning as though they believe silver is heading harshly lower with silver having a 28 handle. Jumping to the LCNS TO for silver, like we do with gold, we compare the silver LCNS with the open interest and that gives us a better picture as to whether the combined commercial hedgers are being aggressive or not. If they're being aggressive, if, they're, if their commercial net shorts make up a high percentage of the open interest, it directly suggests that the people who have to hedge metal in hand, metal in inventory, metal in transit, metal sold but not yet acquired or shipped, metal contracted for but not yet refined, metal sold but not yet delivered, metal in storage and being managed by others, all kinds of metal is being hedged, not to mention all kinds of paper derivatives. And, and on and on. If the big hedger's net short positioning is a large percentage of all the contracts open, it suggests the hedgers see a good chance of much lower silver prices and they're willing to aggressively take the short side of speculator long contracts and vice versa. So look at the graph. With silver sporting a 28 handle, is the LC and STO today high or low? Are the well-connected, best-funded, and presumably best-informed commercial traders in the world of metals trading being aggressive with their hedges right now? Not hardly. The big hedgers 
are not being aggressive in the net short futures department according to the legacy COT report. In fact, as of Tuesday, May 22nd, with $28.16 silver, the LCNSTO falls to an 11-year low of 13.4%. That's right. We have to go all the way back to July 10th of 2001 to find a time when the combined commercial net short positioning was lower as a percentage of the open interest. The LCNSTO was 13.3% then with $4.26 silver. This graph tracks the LCNSTO for silver futures all the way back to the year 2000. And right there is where you can see where the uh, LCNSTO was actually lower than it is today. Today is a 10 year or 11 year low for the LCNSTO. The hedgers are not being aggressive on the short side. The bottom line for the legacy COT report the largest, best funded, and presumably the best informed commercial traders as a group are not positioned aggressively net short gold or silver. And in the case of silver, we can make the case that they, they are aggressively the opposite. The big hedgers have gotten so small net short, we have to go all the way back to 2001 to find a similarly small position relative to the open interest. The easiest way to say it is that the big hedgers are positioned for a bottom in silver and for not all that much downside in gold. It is the very same thing as saying that these veteran traders are more positioned for higher gold and silver prices in a big way. Now the COT doesn't necessarily mean that the big hedgers are right, put the word right in quotes, but it does mean they are positioning for higher, not lower, silver prices. And notice, just before we leave this graph, that lows in the LCNSTO often correspond with lows in the price of silver. The legacy COT is about as bullish as we have seen it in a contrary sense. Let's move on. Now as you probably know we publish the uh, changes, the weekly changes on the disaggregated COT report on the blog each week. As for both gold and silver, uh, we don't have time to go through all the charts we track for the DCOT or the disaggregated COT report but we do want to call attention to a few that have caught our attention this week. First, in gold futures, this week's 74,645 contracts is the lowest net long position for managed money traders, that's hedge funds, commodity trading advisors, etc., since December 16 of 2008. Now, they had 73,332 contracts net long then. That was with $858 gold. A quick takeaway, Manage money is positioned like they were during the 2008 panic with $850 gold. But it's more interesting than that. Notice that one of the reasons that managed money, that the managed money net long position is so low is not because they've sold off so many long contracts, but instead it's because they have added a bunch of short positions to hedge their longs over the past three weeks. Let's take a look. This is the graph for the managed money short positions, just their short positions, not net short positions. Take a look at that spike higher. Now what you're looking at is the highest pure short position for the funds since September 16 of 2008. That was a just a, a horrible period then with extreme volatility. I'm sure everybody remembers it. One week later though, gold had spiked back up to $891 from $779 and managed money traders covered more than 20,000 of those short contracts back then. Now, we believe that managed money uses short contracts as a temporary hedge position for their longer term long positions and so when gold begins a rally, their very high short positions that you see right there on the graph represent significant buying power and rally fuel for gold. And if managed money truly thought that gold was about to move lower hard and move into a protracted bear market, they'd pretty much close out their longs instead of adding shorts to hedge them, wouldn't they? And before we move to silver, notice that the swap dealers have actually gone net long by 82 contracts. It's not often you see the swap dealers net long gold. In this case, it's not size that counts. It's just the fact that they're net long at all. Moving to the disaggregated COT for silver, we're going to see a similar story 
only more so. This is the managed money positioning for silver futures and what you're looking at is the lowest net long position for silver futures since October the 28th 2008. That's the lowest net long position since silver was nine dollars. Just as we saw with gold futures the main reason that the funds held such a low net long position is directly associated with the number of shorts that they've added just recently. Before we look at the managed money short position notice how the lows for this particular graph that blue line in the when it reaches a bottom it usually corresponds with a bottom in the price of silver the reason we're looking at such a low managed money net position is because they have increased their short positioning to a very high level as of tuesday may 22nd the funds held the largest pure short position for silver futures since september the 11th 2007 now that's off this particular chart they were short 14,325 contracts as of Tuesday and back in September the 11th of 2007 it was 14,589 contracts. That's a pretty high level for them to be short when they're usually net long. So managed money is pretty close to flat silver futures but they got there by increasing their shorts more than selling out of their long contracts especially over the last six weeks. Notice that that last peak in shorts in December corresponded with an important turning low for silver near $26 in December of 2011. Silver just bounced at $26 again, but we haven't seen the short positions for the, for the, for the funds coming off yet. Bottom line, managed money is within 4,200 contracts of being at a new record low net long position, and we view that as very strongly bullish in a contrary sense. Not only is there an enormous amount of pent-up bullish long side firepower we can point to, we can also point to a significant amount of short covering the typically net long funds will need to do once silver catches a convincing bid. Well, we've run smooth out of time, so let's go fast. We may have seen the capitulation we have been looking for in the Huey last week and with follow through this past week. That bounce for the big miners was answered by smaller stocks such as these and the GDXJ. And we even saw a little relief from the little guys, represented here by the Canadian Venture Exchange Index. Back to the subscriber pages, and before we forget it, we are going to add an appendix to the Got Gold report list with some of the charts in this update. Um, look for that soon. So maybe the protracted sell-down for the mining shares has finally exhausted its negative energy. Maybe. Before it did, however, and if we ignore the 2008 panic anomaly, the Huey has sold off enough to take us back six years to 2006 levels. The bear market for gold stocks took the miners down to the point where they were discounting something like $650 gold. Now that's if we use the point where the Huey first tested the 380s as our yardstick. Over the past 10 days, we have seen a potential capitulation in the miners, and now it does indeed appear that capital is starting to flow back into them. And now, with the COT information we've shared with you today, we have a sense of how much contra firepower there is waiting to be deployed once it becomes clear that the corrections for gold, silver, and mining shares have, like the flu, run their course. And wouldn't you know it, the Huey bounced inside the 50% to 61.8% Fibonacci retrace level of the 2008-2011 bull recovery move. The Huey bounced in the purple box. That may not be a guarantee, but it is a pretty darn good sign. Now, does that mean that the bear market for the miners is over? No one knows for sure. But at this point, it would not be at all surprising to see the short covering rally underway continue and maybe even pick up the pace just ahead. Now, before we turn you loose, We've put in three capitulations since the year 2000. We may be working on the fourth one right now. And if it is a cap the capitulation we're looking for, we should see that V-shaped signature 
on the Huey relative to gold chart just like we've seen in the past. So that's it for this week's offering. Uh, just before we left to go on our hiatus, we put up a blog post entitled Help is on the way. Be sure and check it out. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.